Welcome everyone. This is Chef Shailendra Darekar, Assistant Professor from ASSMS College of CHM City, Pune. Today, I will be taking session on convenience food part one. Let's begin the session with the objective. So today's objective is introduction of convenience food, then definition of convenience food, then we'll see the history of convenience food, then we are going to look into various types of convenience food, their examples of convenience food, and their classification of convenience food. Let's begin the session with convenience food. So as you can see in the picture, there are various types of food, which is from the market ready to eat, such as sandwiches, juices, then we have yogurt, there are cut fruits and vegetables, curd, etc. As you can see, many food which is ready. This is examples of convenience food. Let's see a definition of convenience food, a simple one. Any types of food where some stage of preparation has been completed beforehand. As you can see in the picture, there are fruits which are already pre-cut and packed and it's ready to eat. Let's see the classical definition of convenience food. It is been defined as those processed food for which the degree of preparation has been carried out to an advanced stage by the manufacturer and which may be used as a labor saving alternative to less highly processed products. Some of the example of convenience food is canned meat, and canned fish, canned vegetables, canned fruits, fruit juices, breakfast cereal, instant coffee, canned soups, and dehydrated soups. As you can see, there are dry fruits in the picture, and there are cuts, pre-packed vegetables in the photographs. Okay, let's move on to the history of convenience food. Many dehydrated food were used during World War II. After the war, war, companies began to market more dehydrated food to the general public. For example, Pillsbury is the first company who market cake mix in 1948. In that, the only flavor which was available was white and chocolate fudge cake. It was pre-mixed and they took 10 years to achieve a finer texture. After that, some other companies such as Tang, which used to make breakfast drink. It was initially flop when it's launched in the market, but afterwards NASA picked up it in 1968 and it was worked better in the space than natural juices. So they used to use it in space as natural juice would form a cake in a vacuum, whereas tank juice doesn't used to have cake formation in a space. So after it is being used, company used to advertise that uh, astronaut drink our juice in space and it's become popular immediately after their advertisement. As you can see, there is a photographs of both Pillsbury ready to make cake mix as well as Tang. Let's move on to convenience food. Why people buy this? Because of today's lifestyle, it is very busy. People don't get time. That's why people prefer to have convenience food. Second reason why people go for convenience food is a quick meal. As you can see, it is ready to eat and you save them some time, okay? Another reason, because it's easy to fix, especially people who don't know how to cook, they can make it, remix and immediately cook it and eat it. Also now there's the lifestyle of people, it's changed, it's become very fast and they don't want to spend more time in the kitchen and they prefer to have convenience food 
so they save them time another reason why people buy food convenience food because whatever time you save you can make up for extra spend which you do on convenience food now contradicting to what we say now let's see why people don't prefer to buy convenience food because there are some lots of people uh, especially in india where people don't prefer to go for convenience food and the reason why people don't prefer convenience food because they may have lower nutritional value also it is very popular known and processed food or junk food as the first picture where you can see cakes donuts pizza ice creams fried food burgers these are very popular in india as well as all over the world but people don't prefer because they have less nutritional value they also have don't have enough portion of fruits and vegetable they may not get enough serving from the food pyramid they may contain high percentage of fat and sodium as you know fried foods always uh, have little extra fat and high amount of sodium many types of convenience food are highly in price as a second picture you can see there is a comparison between a kfc meal of 20 dollars in that same amount you can buy lots of fresh fruit uh, fruits vegetables and meat and you can cook your meal in same amount of money for four five people easily that's why a lot of people don't prefer to buy convenience food let's see a interesting video by expert what they have to say when it comes to processed food typically we are referring to those really heavily modified and uh, really added a lot of additives kind of food like snacks and canned food and uh, microwaveable foods and things like that but is there such a thing as good processed food and how much uh, is too much for us when we eat processed food that is why today on the show we've invited a dietitian from Colombia Asia Hospital Ms Chua Kai Jia here to share with us um, you know to to learn to help us learn more about processed food so welcome on the show Kai Jia <laughs> okay um when we talk about processed food i mean the first thing that comes to my mind are those you know packaged yeah. goods like chips and cookies uh, and and, and sweets actually, and things like that but actually the term processed food mm -hmm. right it covers quite a huge range because the term processed food actually mean anything that are that has, has been changed. processed yeah it's probably processed has changed from their own natural form even like packaged vegetables mm -hmm. biscuits milk it's all processed food okay. but of course there's also the good ones mm -hmm. and the bad ones and you must be are there good ones i don't know if they're good processed food okay let me share an example with you <laughs> for example like milk mm -hmm. okay it has been processed pasteurized and all but it keep it in a safe um condition you mm. see if you actually buy like those fresh one from outside mm -hmm. example like you know people selling like milk cow milk mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they're fresh or, or goat's milk yeah right? yeah they they can be fresh you see but uh are they really clean mm. are they safe to be drink and how are the process you know anyone taking care of it they just take it and do you boil so, it before so is you it, drink so it's not advisable to drink the milk straight from the cow <laughs> you might have to <laughs> the freshest milk that we can get out there it is freshest but uh -huh. of course you look at how they handle it you mm. see whether they handle it with care cleanliness mm -hmm. and all have to be taken care okay. of and if you like boil it for a very long time you might so lose some of the nutrients mm. and things like that mm -hmm. but when you go for like processed one it they have very fortified with vitamin D and um of calcium which is good for us you mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. so there's always good point when it comes to processed food it's mm -hmm. convenient okay. and yeah it can be healthy at the mm -hmm. same time do you have any other examples of food that are processed that we might not even realize that they've been processed that we eat on a daily basis like i was quite surprised i mean i know bread doesn't come in its natural origin like yeah. that you know but but i was surprised to know like because bread is something that we eat almost every day and yeah. it is a processed food it is a processed so um It, would you say that eating too much bread is then bad for health? No, 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 no. no. It's not that way. Um, 
Okay, why are people saying processed food is bad? Okay. All right. The most important, I think you have mentioned just now, mm -hmm. which is the sugar, salt and fat inside. Mm -hmm. All right. If you look, the most important thing when it comes to eating, you must know what you're eating. Mm. So look into the food label. That mm. is something very important. Mm. So if you are looking to bread, the fat and the sodium, or I mean salt or sugar, they are fine. Mm. They are not too bad, you okay. see. But of course, if you compare to, for example, like what you said, the micro mm -hmm. food, right, mm -hmm. that you can instantly make, it, because of this uh, show, I went and have a look. I never know there's so much choices. Okay. You can just get yes. rice and uh -huh. spaghetti lasagna all ready made. Just put it in the microwave, microwave and, and you, you can, can eat, eat it. Yeah. But have you ever looked at the label? See? Mm. You can see the salt in it is about 100 milligram <gasps> for one portion. Okay. And we, are, we only need about 2004, so it's half there per in day. one meal. We need one day 2004 milligram of salt. Yes. Okay. And one pack of that will be about 1000 there. So. It's already half our quota's gone, you see? Okay. So the salt can be quite high and oh, so to the fat and so on. So mm -hmm. reading the label is very important. Okay. Not all processed food is bad. Okay. All right. Yeah. But I mean, of course, a lot of people out there, like myself included, I don't go and read everything. Yeah. And even <laughs> if I do read the labels, I do not understand yeah. what you know, whether uh -huh. or not this is healthy for me and my family. So uh -huh. what should we look out for if we're looking at processed food oh, okay i think the most important thing three items okay one is the sugar level mm -hmm. one is uh, salt but you didn't really like the right less salt they were right sodium, less sodium mm -hmm. all right sodium and another one will be your fats mm. so, uh, so for example like if you look at mm, things like nuggets mm -hmm. or burgers they are ready made their fat can be quite high you mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. it's almost okay if we talk about burgers, nuggets. The first thing going in our mind will be high in protein, right? Because yeah. it's all meat. It's meat. Yeah. yeah, right? But when you really look at the and label... And even sausages. Like yes. Very yes, highly definitely. processed. Yeah. Yes. When you look into the label itself, really, the fat and the protein are equally as high. Okay. So imagine how much fat are you taking. <laughs> so it's like one sausage, maybe about two te 10 grams of all will be about uh, two teaspoons. You haven't added your... You Fried the, the deep fried the oil. Yes. So okay. It can be quite. So the first thing we look for is the fat, fat content, fat? the sodium, sodium and also and the sugar. sugar. Yeah. Mm. Actually, okay. I would strongly say that all these things can be done very easily at home. You know, it's not that troublesome. You know, <laughs> <laughs> some people they find it very troublesome. But actually, to make some homemade burgers, patties, yeah, you know, yeah. you can just freeze it uh -huh. for some time. On the weekend, maybe, you know, we are working and yeah, all, yeah, yeah. you just freeze it and occasionally on the weekdays, you just have to pan fry it for a while. It's fine. It's okay. very easy. Yeah. Well, now the, lead me to the, my next question. All right. um, say we, we don't care about labels, we just eat whatever we uh -huh, want uh -huh. and we base it on convenience and how tasty yeah. it is and whatnot. <laughs> and we eat a lot of instant yeah. noodles uh -huh. and processed food. Uh -huh. How much will be too much? Mm. Like, what will happen to our health if this okay. is our, is this, this is the a case? Very good question. Yeah. All right. When you look at it in that way, um, they might not. Uh, you won't see an instant yeah. like, okay, today I eat a lot, and tomorrow you will see mm. an effect. No, it's not that way. But if you eat all this high sugar, high fat, high salt, you will tend to get high calorie as well, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's high calorie, you get obesity Fats. issue. <laughs> when obes <laughs> Obesity comes in, mm -hmm. the next issue will be all the diabetes, high cholesterol, all this will come in. Mm -hmm. So better take care, prevention is better than cure, yeah. I will always say that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there has been studies shown that eating processed food can actually lead to certain types of cancers yeah. as well. And looking at a uh, current trend, sort mm -hmm. of, I feel like a lot of our young people, like in their 30s, in their 40s, have cancer nowadays. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's because of eating all these processed food oh. from when they were young mm -hmm. that, that sort of caused the rise in the mm -hmm. cancer, especially in younger people? Mm, I can't say so. Mm. Okay, because until Today, until today, there's no strong evidence that saying all these products are cancerous. Mm -hmm. If it is, then all these products have to stop, right? <laughs> it won't be in the market. Yeah. yeah. So far, well, I no, mean, people yeah. want to make money. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so far, there's no like proven evidence okay. saying that how much you eat and you will end up with cancer. Mm -hmm. no, no such thing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, of course, it's still we will still recommend people to go back to fresh, mm. eat yeah. clean eat. and fresh yes. and raw yes. food. Yeah. But of course, moderation is still the key, mm -hmm. I mean, once in a while, one fish ball or one sausage <laughs> will not harm you. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. So before that, we were talking about how some processed food can be 
Well, well, maybe not healthy, but mm. more convenient. Yeah. Like, do you have any examples of like maybe good processed food for mm. uh, to share okay. with us what besides I... milk? Okay. Uh, all packaged frozen veggie is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, working like ladies, peas, you don't really yeah. have that kind of time mm -hmm. to go to market every day. Mm. So frozen one will be fine. Mm -hmm. Frozen veggies, or even if you're talking, about, okay, I feel like making a bolognese spaghetti mm -hmm. today, but you can't be. It's a bit hard for us, you know, to really go and blend all the tomatoes mm -hmm. and all. Puri will be helpful, okay. tomato puri. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at it, try to choose those like low salt, mm -hmm. low sugar, or like tuna in water. Mm -hmm. You know, not like tuna in salt or yep, tuna yep. in oil uh -huh. or tuna in something else. You <laughs> okay, know? okay. You have to be clever in the way choosing what you eat. Mm -hmm. that, that's the key to all this. Yeah, okay. So uh, what I get from you is that you it, it, in moderation, everything in moderation. moderation yeah, and moderation. if you do have to eat a lot of canned food and whatnot, mm -hmm. Look for the labels, yes. check that it's low salt, salt low, low sugar, sugar and low fat. fat. Yes. And I mean, processed food are there for us to mm -hmm. sort of make things convenient, convenient. for us. So yes. we shouldn't just knock it down and say that oh, all processed yes. food is bad and then we'll have a lot of trouble, yes. especially for all the working mothers out there yeah, who have no right. time to cook. Yeah. Yeah. So go for it, but moderation is the key. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Kai Chia, all for right. sharing that with us. Uh, well, later on the show, we will have a next segment coming up on the show, of course. We are going to teach you how to make something that is normally very processed from scratch at home, so you want to stay tuned. Very nice, interesting video uh, and advice by expert dietitian. A lot of things to take from it. Let's move on to the various sectors in convenience food. There are four main convenience food product sectors. So there are frozen food. As you can see in the picture, there are various snacks in the first picture where you can see burger patty and other things, uh, snacks, which can be uh, bought frozen. Uh, so that is one sector. The second sector is dehydrated food, where you can see the dry fruits, which you use uh, very often uh, in your home. So that is the second sector. Then canned food, we have various canned, uh, of beans or tomatoes uh, where we use it, pickles, uh, gherkins. So these are the things we use in a can or tin. So this is the third sector. And the last but not the least, prepared and partly prepared food. So example of prepared food, as you can see the picture, there is a chips, layers chips, which is prepared ready to eat food and partly prepare there is lettuce in the picture which is washed and cut and later on you can use them while making salads so these are the four main sector of convenience food let's move on to the classification of convenience food i already mentioned in the previous uh, discussion where there is some of the food which is ready to eat so that is one of the type of convenience food and the other one is ready to cook or ready to use food. Okay, these are the main two classification of convenience food. Let's go into detail of them. So first classification is ready to use and cook food. So ready to use items with a low degree of preparation means basically wash and prep which is already done and you can start cooking them and finish the dish. Okay, these are always in portion sizes like meat or fish, frozen or canned or boiled, bags in the soup or a starter or entree, ready to cook pies, which is already prepped and frozen and you just put it in the oven and cook them further and they are ready to eat. Okay, these are the ready to use and cook food. Let's see the next classification, which is ready to eat food. Items that are ready to serve, such as cold meat or sweet pies, ice creams, canned fruit segments, prepare can or fresh appetizers, which are straight away ready to eat. Like I mentioned chips, these are the ready to eat food. 
okay which very commonly used all over the world let's see the examples of them so ready to eat food food products that are prepared in advance and can be eaten directly as you can see there are chips in the picture there are cold cuts which are already cured prepared and ready to eat in the sandwiches then there are dry fruits and there are ice creams which we eat directly we don't have to process them the second category is ready to cook or use food so ready to cook the very popular food which is there in india is maggi noodles which we cooked and the second popular all uh, especially in european country is pizza in the picture frozen pizzas which very popular you buy in the market and get it home and put it in the oven and it is ready to cook and you can cook and eat it straight away after cooking so it saves some time so thank you very much guys these are my references which i use for making this session so thank you so much everyone for listening uh, a gentle request for assms hms city student please click and attempt a quiz link which will be given in the description box Thank you so much for listening. Bye bye.